So, at the very beginning, as I just told you, the concept of literacy itself is not so special thing. But I prefer the explanation of the data literacy from the data literacy project that I just introduced the auto site. And providing the uh, explanation from the portal side, data literate are those who have the ability to read and work with and analyze and communicate with data. If you are familiar with SNS or Instagram, or you have experience to use and the, uh, to do something on Excel. At least you are a kind of the data little like already. So that's why I told you, you don't need to worry so much about whether you are data little like or not. However, the problem is whether you are good data literate or whether you are not good data literate. That's the problem. So what makes you good or bad? As I see in the bottom, I am very particular about whether you are equipped with requisite skill and mindset. I specifically emphasize the importance of the mindset. Usually, the sharp difference between data avoider and the data newcomer is the mindset. Whether you try to avoid to use the data for saying something, or those are the typical portrait of data avoider. Meanwhile, the data newcomer is more like the person who try to use or who want to use the data to communicate something, but they are not good at it. If you already equipped with a mindset, what you have to do later on is to train yourself. So no need to worry about it. But if you evaluate yourself, it's more like the data avoider, probably you do better to change your mindset. And you know, Malaysian government or any school, high school, elementary school, even a kindergarten, elementary university and the business school as well, stress the importance of the data science or the data literacy. What will be? The ideal future, if everyone will be good data literally. I found very interesting the, uh, the writing from Sir Adrian Smith, the, uh, the chairperson of the Loyal Society of the Academy Science of the United Kingdom. He said, as you read, it's sometimes say that every teacher is an English teacher because every teacher is a teacher in English. In the 21st century, we might say that every teacher is a math teacher. Thinking in this way would help avoid True honing everything to do with numbers into a box labeled math, which has negative connotations for many.
this is the world in my understanding. There is no one who evaluates themselves as a data avoider. Let's say even very simple the addition can be a map. In the ideal world, in the ideal future, everyone do not have any mental obstacle to play with the data. So, at first, please be proud of yourself. You, as a business school student, are all data literate, at least to some extent. In that you can read and process and analyze and communicate with the data, numeric data, text data, or visual, or et cetera. That's why. I told you beforehand that yeah, if you are very familiar with the uh, the Instagram or the uh, WhatsApp and the how to you how to understand how you are familiar with the forwarding the data or the uh, to analyze the data from the SNS, you are data little. What? And the good data little like in science is just a matter of the extension of your hungry and your, your playing with Instagram data. But just imagine in your real world and in your real life and the, uh, your ordinary life. If you may say someone is very good user of Instagram or very good user of WhatsApp. You can say those friends, your acquaintances, are, are relatively competent data literally because they are very good at using those data. But what different from the data little competent data literate in the ordinary sense and the academic sense? First, as you know, or I'm not sure whether you may have the company name or the product name Tableau. Tableau is one of the uh, popular dashboards around the world and the uh, providing the uh, prefix the uh, dashboard. The dashboard, this Tableau classify the uh, Required data little skills into two class. First is non technical skill, and the another one is the technical skill. Non technical skill includes critical thinking and research skill and communication skill and subject knowledge. So just imagine that. You will conduct
Okay, sorry for the small trouble. Now I'm back. So again, the uh, what I want to tell you so far is be confident. At least you are to some extent they don't really like. But problem is how good you are. And the screen suddenly shut down when I start to talk this slide and they are going back to this slide again. Tableau, if you never heard this Tableau name, please check on your computer and the what Tableau is all about. Because the, uh, if you are new to the business and the uh, once you will start to work, some of you are forced to be familiar with Tableau. And to be good Tableau user, Tableau proposed these eight skill, or sorry, nine skill. First, as I just told you, critical thinking. Why critical thinking is important? You shouldn't believe when you have data to be critical. And why research skill is important? Because you have to analyze, to analyze. And this is very common, the uh, very young researcher and the very young student. To start some analysis before having clear research question. But to be very competent, data data like like the typical research process, you have to have clear research question and providing that research question, you will design your data analysis. And so, communication skill is also important. I stress, I want to stress this communication skill should be most important for the business school student, regardless of the data or any other specific application field. And domain knowledge is also apparently important. Otherwise, you will not be able to imagine what data is telling. On the other way around, technical skill or hard skill consists of five different skills. First, analysis. But never be overwhelmed. Analysis skill can be okay if you are familiar with Excel. And you are saying that you are they are really like, or do you have the skill, this technical skill of visualization, if you can create a glass on Excel as well. Of course, I never say you are good or excellent, but you are data relevant. And management skill may be equipped with all of you. Because in order to do something on Excel, you have to combine some data and create some chart and the uh, kind of plotting or something. If you can do it, you are automatically doing data management. And fourth and fifth may be challenging for some of you. Tableau requests and the Tableau demands, at least to some extent of the uh, mathematic knowledge. And finally, programming language. So, 
what I expect of a student here is, as a business school student, you want to enhance this non-technical skill and at least to be capable to sleep and to brush up and to sophisticate those skills. And having this knowledge about the map, I don't mean you are familiar with derivative or some other integral or something. Only typical high school level mathematics is not. And finally, Tableau demands programming languages, but if you attend my lecture yesterday, I already suggest, and the, uh, I told you already, you don't need to study R uh, or Python or some other uh, computer languages from the scratch. But if you are familiar with ChatGPT and to write the text in a prompt in an appropriate way, I want to do this programming and I want to apply this source code. So tell me that model source code, that will be that. Okay, so business school student has to be capable and be uh, more competent than engineering student or data science engineers in non-technical skill. And when it comes to the technical skill level, the, uh, of course, more the better, but you are expected to have the, uh, the competence to work with Excel. And this skill about mathematics and programming languages, but be a little bit more knowledgeable about ChatGPT and very good at prompting. Then you can complement this skill. If so, you may say, you are already data literate. But why did the school or the university or even the high school are stressing the importance of data literacy skill now? Be not. The current implication of data literacy is to let business student can come up with data science. So what is data science is all about and what data science is for? As a business school student, all you have to understand is this sentence, ultimate goal of data science is to improve decision making process. Okay. So, for instance, I mentioned about Instagram. If the data from Instagram is a product of data science, as you know, if the data from Instagram will help your decision making process and you are actually realizing it, probably you are. Data related to the ordinary life. But again, 
for the future leader, you have to say, and you have to evaluate whether those data science you actually help your decision making or not. Data avoider will not be able to do that because they are surrendered from the data. But if you categorize yourself and be the data newcomer or try to be data apprentice and try to use data for your decision making purpose, but you don't see any improvement, then That's not your goal. But keep always thinking how data science or data literacy will help you decision making process. But, oh, I have to say, today's lesson and today's my lecture is mainly targeting the uh, young business school student, young master student. And, but, after trying this, and the once you will start work at the company, you may face dilemma. Why? Because your seniors or your managers are not necessarily data literate. Here, I present two extreme personality and the trait of the persona or the manager. One is data driven decision making manager. Completely opposite type manager rely on KKD. KKD is a Japanese the yeah, abbreviation, which means the person who make a decision based on intuition and experience and not What's the sharp difference between these two type of manager? Data driven managers make decision making explicit, transparent to everyone. Meanwhile, KKD managers' decision making process is in black box. No one can understand, although they can imagine. It may be very sad story if you will be very good data literally, but start to work under the supervision or under the leadership of KKD manager. Because usually KKD manager are classified to data avoider. So when you do your job hunting and providing your persona. Please be very careful the chemistry between your personal trade and the company's culture, which approach will be respected. And of course, the current emphasis on data science or the data literacy assumes all the companies should move to work data driven XP. But you may have, of course, you may have some very successful and a bright story of the company who successfully transformed themselves to data literate company. But, you know, many more times, I mean, at the failure case, a company or the companies who fail to transform.
providing that. And they pro I hope you do keep that in mind. And nevertheless, that trader case, many, many tons of many are case. Society assume and facilitate the uh, data literacy expansion, assuming that data science penetration may shift the optimal point between KKD and data grid. But no one knows to what extent. And if optimal point between intuitive decision making and the data delivery decision making will shift toward like that. What should business school students are equipped with? The technical skill or non-technical skill, as I told you, is a kind of must. I am talking about technical skill only. The student should be equipped with the technical skills at the level with the data scientist level. I told you. Of course, it's your decision for your future career to pursue the uh, technical skill at the same level with a data scientist, but it's not necessary. This is one extreme case. This is one of the best selling the uh, data science textbook from the Mattani, the former professor of the Blue School of the University of Chicago. He teach data science at the University of Chicago Business School based on this textbook. This textbook's content are on the right hand side, starting from uncertainty, move on to regulation, and then followed by the regularization and classification, experiment, control, factorization, textless data, mean text mining, and non parametrics and the AI. Probably. Ordinary business school student who doesn't have engineering background can imagine what will be taught in first two chapters. Probably all of you are familiar with what OLS is all about. But some may be embarrassed when you find the chapter titled Legalization. What is regularization or normalization of the data? And as an example, I show the uh, section content of chapter 10, AI. You may heard the term AI itself so many times, or you may hear more than enough. And look at the section title from 10.2, general purpose machine learning and the deep learning and stochastic gradient descent and reinforcement learning. Probably a kind of alien work for those who had only social science background. Of course, as I just told you, if you will be, if you pursue to be equipped with at least same technical level, technical skill level of the uh, data science undergrad student, probably almost all the content in this textbook is a must. But you can survive if you are not fully prepared for that, how you should do it. And while keeping the, your confidence, while sustaining the, uh, 
the satisfactory level of the data literacy, the data literacy. This is the point. This is what we are thinking about future business school graduates. We are currently nurturing business analysts. You are supposed to be business analysts. Meaning that functional and reason business analysts are expert of marketing, are expert of operational management, or expert of accounting, or expert of leadership. But if you are very keen to the, uh, the recent movement in developed country, US, Europe, or Japan, if you do that, or China, or South Korea as well. Most of the marketing tasks are replaced by data scientists. So, every business school, including our school, are wondering or afraid. Digital transformation may change the decision-making process and change management job as well. And business analyst task and the data analyst task may be integrated. But again, to what extent? No one knows. This classification of the analyst of the scientist and the uh, demanded skill are both from the uh, University of Berkeley, the uh, data science school. If you will be the data analyst, you are expected to be equipped programming like SAS, R, Python, stats, math, prompting, languaging, and geolization. If you go further, and you have to pursue to be the data scientist. In addition to programming, such math, you are also expected to be equipped with storytelling and Hadoop, SQL, and machine learning. And father, the data engineer, another extreme of the uh, data production programming some different program language plus no sql and hadoop again no need to understand the each keyword i told you in the previous slide you should be good at non-technical level But your decision should be to what extent your technical skill should be enhanced. You can try data analysis, but as I just told you, no need to worry so much. These technique can be replaced by good content functions. Providing that, I want to ask you really quick. This is what I actually do at the very beginning of the uh, data related course. Now, 
everyone can type yeah, the other uh, chat box and the uh, three steel few names and to say something what you can know from this data okay give you two or three minutes and type to read it what you get to know from this data Of course, this is very small data, but I want to know your current intent level of the uh, data analysis. Anything. Actually, this is the yeah, real data from POS point of sale system. Just give me an idea. This is just more like a frame. Mm. That's why I say this is just a kind of frame. <laughs> mm. But if you are good data related, you can say something. My video class followed by showing the larger data and the uh, to move on to the um, more sophisticated analysis. But again, I am currently asking if the current English from this data. So, this slide summarizes some of the response from the previous student. Again, someone has different impression, but many customers in their 30s or older. Let's say, look at this. We can have 120, 220. So, if you are carefully looking at the estimated age, you may think majority, most of customers are over 30. Meaning that the product or the stuff that your current, that your current restaurant or the shop are offering are not attracting twenties. Second, just look at the time. Be careful 
although the number of the, uh, the data is quite limited, you can say that one customer in 10 hours, one, two, three, four, five, six customers in 11. One, two is two customers in 12. Two customers in 1 p.m. Again, one customer in 2 p.m. No customer in 3 p.m. Four customer in, one customer in 4 p.m. Two in five, one in six. Then, Providing the current data, we can say that there are many customers around 11 o'clock. If I show this, probably almost all you can say, I know that. But this is very important intuition for you. And providing these facts, you can probably say, or you can infer, there are many customers around 11 o'clock. Mean that many customers buy item for lunch. Although the current data did not refer to the item they bought, customer bought, but you can further suspect it may be better to increase the number of the noodles, the juices for lunch. I told you, you may remember, I told you, even the Excel computers is enough. The problem is, if you have this kind of data and try to make it a habit to look at the bare data and to have some intuition for moving on to the analyst, then you can train your data literacy. Next question. Oh, before that, I have to say something. Yes. This is what I want to stress. Those who already tried the uh, the data literacy test and the uh, class by two data avoider. If you are not so, so confident in your ability to come up with stat, math, and the AI progress, meaning that you will choose small sheet from business and store data. And those who assure not so drastic shift from left hand side to right hand side. I suggest you go back to the basics or nurturing your insight as a business analyst in order to put the data in the right context. For this particular purpose, I stress again and again and let our students do this type of exercise without using Excel. Or 
if you will be starting your own research project and collect data. Of course, your supervisor will guide you very well. But I ask my, our students the same thing. What you can learn from the bare data or the low data? And then I will guide and I will direct my student to create histogram one by one and see what you can say. And then direct them to create some kind of the plot to see the, uh, the intuitive correlation of the relationship between two data and ask them what you can say. After finishing this reasoning training, technological training, or the data literacy enhancement training, if I use the more appropriate term. I will move on to the uh, statistical testing. So how about for those who prefer this approach? Show you one example. This is real case that I am involved in. Just read and think. In one of my consultancy job, the customer success team of the Japanese subsidiary of the global leading professional data provider. It's called Elsevier, you may know. Data provider of the academic data and the uh, scientific data. And the UIDM subscribe the other scopus. That's the Elsevier. And the company use net promoter score from Bain and the company to measure customer value and the uses KPI for customer success team. This is the basic factor. Okay, so moving on to the next. Comparing the Japanese NPS data with other countries, the score was exceptionally low than other countries. However, Japanese team also found the customers, those who mark very low NPS, were more likely to renew the contract or contribute to upset. So what's their dilemma? If global headquarters will evaluate the Japanese customer team only with reference to NPS. They have risk to be dissolute, dissolute and the uh, close customer success. But the mission of customer success team is to increase the possibility of the renewed contract as well as helping upset. This is objective and this is KPI. So if you are the manager of the Japanese team, how do you communicate the complaints to global executives? 
that you are doing the right thing with the available data. The instant way is to visit loyal customer while scoring the video MPS and asking them in order to keep a very good relationship with your company and here between our team and your company, pretty smart, higher score. This is a manipulation. But if you don't do so, how you will convince the global headquarters that you are doing right? Of course, I hope some of you already did that to combine this data and this data and to see, to show irrelevancy between NPS and their true success. This is immediate solution. But in order to be very good data literate monitor, in the long run, you will propose amendment to this management matrix. If so, what do you do? I believe they are literally your manager can propose better metric in order to measure true something and they are too much the metric with their actual feeling. If some of you have working experience, you may think actually we succeed in achieving KPI, but I don't think we are doing very well. In this case, your actual feeling and the KBI is not enough. And you have to propose the better KBI or better the quantitative objection. <laughs> Again, this is my understanding of data little data literate manager. Fuja use the data based on the metric and to make good decision making. I told you data science has to include decision making process. If global executive simply lead KPI and make decision, They may make very long decision. These situations may happen everywhere. Far more foreign than the fresh and the young student can imagine. Even in the business school, even in the company, even in the government. So what I want to say in this slide, to be competent, basic and nurturing your insight as a business analyst needs to be the manager who can amend and who can propose better medley. Analysis can be done 
by the future collaborator. Collaborator means data engineers and data scientists. And if you will be capable to propose amendment of the revision of the method, you are instantly be equipped with another very important skill called storytelling. Just check this very important skill in AI era, storytelling. If you are not familiar with this term, of course, storytelling is a popular word. But storytelling in data science of the data analysis is to let data tell something. Okay. So I hope at first you will how you will consider how much shift will be happening. Providing your future career. If you don't move so drastically, at least for the coming three years or five years, many of the decision is based on intuition or experience. But if the global economy will shift towards right hand side, those companies will have to exit from marketplace in the long run. But if you believe the shift will happen radically in the coming few years. You have to be more, you have to move more to work data analysis. It's your decision. But even if you are not so familiar with programming, and some kind of the visualization. You can think of the solution for this dilemma. Thinking of the solution for this dilemma cannot be done by not or bad data relay. Because bad data relay simply leave the data. So you may have, you may witness some of the article here, the picture or the abstract uh, picture or the uh, tragedy picture created by gen generated AI will show and it will surprise the world. Why that happen? They simply leave the picture in the absence of critical thinking. So if you are not surprised when you first witness the picture, probably you are a bit with critical thinking skill. There's a most strong idea, the confidence against the, uh, the data student. Okay. So from now on, I will introduce the, some kind of the, uh, the new data for you, if you are not familiar with neuroscience and experiment. Why? I want to introduce those data. If you already conduct the uh, 
you self check and the data avoider and you can evaluate the data avoider probably your first class is mindset change but if they your hard work side due to the data newcomer or something the next task is to be curious about the type of the data and the, uh, what you can do with different type of data. And probably master students do not have a so long time for conducting research. And probably very hardly to see and get contact experiment. And some of you cannot imagine you know, what neural marketing data is all about. So in order to I hope at least yeah, give some stimuli about your curiosity about the uh, different type of data. I choose to talk something about experimental data and the neural marketing. First, this is very simple. The yeah, artist look like explanation. What is experiment? Experiment is a method to use to evaluate the cause and effect relationship by manipulating one or more independent variable and observing the impact of one or more dependent variable. The sharp difference between experiment data or the second hand or the other data is whether the data collected the control setting or not. For instance, if you are familiar with financial data, and if you already read some of the, uh, the papers, which is the uh, second hand data or the secondary data, like the financial data, or the, uh, the survey data or something. And having the experience to conduct some statistical analysis applying the OLS or something. And you already learned the importance of the control variable. Why we have to include control variable? Reason is very simple. The data are collected in uncontrolled setting. That's why we have to include control. So these we are very characteristics of the experiment. First, control the environment. isolate the effect of specific variable. This control helps ensure the results are due to the manipulated variable or not external factor. We have inserted many, many control variable for typical management study, simply because we cannot control And second, very characteristic of experiment is manipulation of the variable. We need that manipulating the independent variable to see how it affects the dependent variable. And third, measurement of outcome. The impact of the manipulation is measured and then analyzed to understand the relationship between variable. And here is the point. I heard from Dr. Alpha that the uh, considerable number of the graduate students decided to adapt survey approach or questionnaire approach. 
So what is the different, very common and the popular approach at the AGBS and the experiment? First, plus experiment have benefit to infer causal relationship. And second benefit is controllability. And third benefit is replicability. Meanwhile, Sabe has benefit, at least four benefits. We can collect many data. And we can change the setting, meaning that we can collect the data online, we can collect the data at the station or the shopping mall, anywhere. And in relation to this flexibility, it's far more effective than expected. And it's also real world data. And finally, fast. Some of you who attend my session yesterday afternoon may remember my question to ChatGPT. What is the best way to complete master thesis project in given time frame? And they answer, survey is the best. And this advantage of the uh, experiment can be fourfold. First, artificial chat setting, not the world observation. And second, complex and costly. And third, we will intervene human behavior itself. So ethical and the practical limitations are huge. And four, time consuming. On the other way around, survey also has huge disadvantage. First, lack of causal inputs. I'm not sure the yeah, weather you already said to your PR research project. But if you have experience to conduct some hypothesis testing and the, uh, your supervisor may direct you to write the hypothesis in the way, variable A and the variable B has significant relationship. Although you may be, or you may want to say A equals B. We can never say A equals B from the data of the survey because we will not be able to see any time order to A and B. And second, responsible bias. Meaning that if you conduct a survey to your friend, it's very unlikely that your friend will reply the very negative and the honest opinion. Or you may say that yeah, if I smart for instance, let's say the yeah, all three, four, five liter scale question, and the yeah, as you you are student, it will not deliver insignificant result. So you may incline to mark high score or low score. And we cannot ask so many questions. And providing that benefit and the disadvantages, we are in vessels in choosing and using 
these two different approach. And experiment will be best for understanding causal effect. Meanwhile, survey is good for exploring attitude, opinions, and behavior across the broad population. Again, what I want to say in this slide is, as far as I know, GBS is not equipped with the, uh, the neural marketing the, uh, experiment condition, but be noted, your selected approach may have this benefit and disadvantage. And be careful what you can do. Providing that, I want to introduce you what additional influence can be done with experiment data. When I say experiment, usually we can classify into three types. First, laboratory environment experiment, in which we conduct the uh, controlled environment where all conditions can be controlled. Plus is precise measurement. Cons, lab realism. This is the first type of the uh, experiment. Second, field environment. Conducted in a real world setting, such as in stores or market. Plus, realistic. But this control over externals the variable, meaning that we cannot control the external condition. So becoming popularity these days, online experiment conducted via digital platform to leverage the internet reach and the technology to gather data efficiently and often in real time. Plus, scalability, precision, and ability to test with diverse audiences. But face the same problem with the field environment. Cannot control external variable because we will not be able to control the situation the respondent will answer. And test unit can be valid contingent to the research topic. And these are the kind of the also what textbook type explanation, what is independent, what is dependent, what is external. But you can read this in any textbook. Providing that. And hope you to keep this slide and the, uh, try to remember when you can think, when you can think to conduct some experiment. Designing and conducting a liberal experiment requires careful planning to ensure validity and reliability of the finding. Actually, for the research project that I will introduce from now on, it will take almost one year only for planning. before starting this laboratory environment experiment. Okay. So probably this is a little bit too technical, so I can skip. 
And what I want you to know is these three types as well. Experiment testing includes those very famous tests. You can find many textbooks and in many articles in the blog. The first very popular one is A-B test. One of the simplest form of control experimentation and it is widely used in the digital marketing product design and web development. In an A-B test, two versions of a single product are compared directly against each other on specific performance metric. The objective is to identify which version performs better and thereby inform decision making. If you want to pursue the same test without using experiment, meaning that by using survey or something. You can consider the hybrid version of conjoint analysis. And the second one, multivariate testing, similar to A-B testing, but more than two variables are tested. And finally, sequential testing. This approach involves introducing changes to a group over time and observing a response to each change. And used for more longitudinal studies. Actually, this sequential testing will deliver very fruitful implication, but usually really challenging for securing the, uh, the respondents for longitudinal base as well as somebody. But if you want to be the marketer and the uh, Try to come up with and complete with the uh, data science reading marketer. You are expected to be capable about this AB testing approach, at least. This is one of the uh, must approach, the one of the must tests to be done in practice. And we'll be on to a little bit more. Again, we can use these three tools for experiment. We usually combine the answer from the, uh, each test and the each tools and try to say something. And again, probably from now on, I will give you a yeah, very short, big study about the, uh, the new science. Although we can collect and you know, we can investigate and we can analyze the consumer's behavior or the, uh, the subject behavior or subject decision by questionnaire or by interview. But There are many, many challenges we are facing to solve. First, tendency toward freezing the interview. If you have experience to conduct the interview, you may never witness, most of you at least, may never witness someone who are very offensive especially when you conduct interview. Do you think you can believe what your interviewees are saying as it is? 
if you think you don't know, you don't say, you don't think so, probably there may be some bias. And yeah, your research output may be bias or telling the lie. Second, traditional market research does not always accurately interpret it. This is truly frequently happen in the practice. One of the very famous approach of the uh, traditional market research is focus group interview. The set to show one potential new product and the uh, to let the uh, focus group discuss about the pros and cons and the, uh, the that new product and the uh, to suggest something the uh, to sell this. But everyone knows it's not so reliable. Just imagine when you are asked whether this new product will be interesting or you want to buy if new product will be in market. I saw many, many survey output and almost all the survey result will show more than others. But once the company market the product believing the result, it's very natural they will fail. And third problem is inaccuracy. And finally. This is another reason why financial business analysis based market are, are currently replaced by data science solution marketer. Marketing strategy, traditional approach of the marketing strategy becoming more and more effective. The set. Currently, if you are interested in the marketing, you may know and you can point out that the influencer marketing is the one of the top topic. Of course, you could succeed if you find the potential of the influencer marketing 10 years ago. But if you do that, influencer marketing now it doesn't meet the cost usually as such company is looking for another approach or another dimension to be more successful the effective marketing strategy So we believe at least the new data is more effective than traditional research. And why? We can remove subjectivity and ambiguity. And we also assume biological response doesn't lie. And four, we believe we can reach unconscious mind. And fifth, we believe we can take input from the process happening in the brain and skip all emotion and ego. And finally, it's difficult for first survey to capture the emotional reasons underlying consumer preference of decision. That's why we believe we can say something new by adapting 
neuroscientific approach to environmental risk. And see this, if you are interested in marketing, and the, uh, if, if this is the first time for you to hear neuromarketing talk, if we can have good data from neuromarketing approach, we'll better meet unmet market needs and drive buying the uh, buying program. And this is what I am, we are currently very particular about, to guide our marketers to just make the right product design, packaging and other message to boost them. Again, our basic premise is, the answer from survey or the interview are not fair or are not always are not always like and if you will be familiar with the neuro marketing with the new scientific tool you can measure this level for instance attention level emotion memory preference, engagement, trust, and perception, and interest level. But before moving power, I have to give some clear. Although, we believe, and the uh, many news marketing researchers believe, we will be able to deliver more transparent and the uh, more data driven decision making can be possible with neuromarketing marketing data. Because those can be classified as a big data. If, as I told you, the objective of data science is to improve the decision making process. And after doing considerable number of the research using the neuroscience data in marketing, but you will find no specific additional insight will be delivered from neuro marketing. This topic and this research field will be shrink. So, if you are not so enthusiastic about those kind of brain science, but you occasionally, I suggest you to occasionally check the progress of the neuromarketing. Because this can be a mainstream in the future, but this will decease. In one side. And in the coming few slides, I am introducing you some of the very popular the, uh, the devices is tools to measure the brain motion. One of the most common the, uh, the devices to measure the brain motion is. It's very hard to pronounce electroencephalography. Sorry, I usually call it EEG. And this EEG will help the brain wave here. When respondents see this set of the other brief options, and let's say, for instance, if they look at this black belief. We can monitor the brain motion in a different part. 
and to see whether the blank motion in each segment in the blank may be different or not. EG can help to collect the data of the blank motion in each part. And we can apply to any you know, project and the product and the subject. The another very famous approach and another very famous device is eye tracking. Probably some of you who are very keen to the marketing already tried this eye tracking system. We will see here how the eyes of the other respondents move before making the final decision. And third, also it's a kind of the uh, medical work. So let me call it EMG. EMG is a method that measures and registers the voluntary, the involuntary movement of muscle. And to see the uh, correlation between the muscle movement and emotional movement and facial movement. And another famous one is called GSR. Probably you may be equipped with this type of you know, the devices when you visit the, uh, the medical clinic. And face reading as well. You can understand it to understand the uh, whether the uh, respondents are smiling or to maybe embarrassing and feeling happy or anything. We can do using the, uh, the devices to measure and the, uh, to read the face. And using those very typical devices, I believe what we are currently doing. And if you are interested in some of the projects, I don't mean the uh, I am promoting you to be a member. But if you are interested in this new direction of the marketing research, all you can do is just to ask Dr. Alpha, then the, uh, she will introduce uh, one of our team members who is the principal investigator of the neuromarketing and the, to let her deliver more in depth the uh, neuromarketing research and the neuromarketing study. As you can see, the, uh, one of the other uh, current projects we are currently doing and the, uh, between our school and the uh, Bandung Institute of Technology is effect and the color and the price towards underwear choice. Probably you can understand what we want to say. Probably the underwear color actually affect the respondent decision or not. And second, the role of multidimensional perceived value, trust, and commitment to achieve collaboration in West Java agribusiness. Because yeah, this project is a kind of long-lasting project mainly led by the ITB group. And this project will see whether trustworthiness among the people will actually help initiate in social business. And third, Analysis of new psychological reactions to a tourism advertising 
video campaign to see whether which will be the more engaging one. Again, we can investigate the respondent's attitude or respondent's preference by showing some of different types of the, uh, the pictures of the video and asking by question. But imagine yourself that you are such. If you are shown for a five or six video and you have to choose which one is most favorable for you, can you really explain why you choose this? Probably not. I cannot do that. Of course, some of our decision making or the our preference are heavily influenced by unconscious some. So by adapting a new market neuroscience approach, we want to have more unbiased data. And also, the, uh, the research topic itself may be quite popular, even in traditional marketing research. Customer taste preferences of several Indonesian coffee. Again, we can ask Start. Which do you like? But we don't know. Their said preference is consistent with the emotion. And another one. I movement study to increase consumers' attention on digital posting of beloved luxury fashion brand. If some of you already be aware, and some may not, you can figure out this approach of this experiment is really specific, but that's the neural market. And another idea that we, uh, we plan to do in the future is comparative balance between sub and the dark trailer of Japanese animation. And some other more. Again, you can take a look at what we are currently doing and we are uh, from Dr. Alpha. Probably Dr. Alpha will share the, uh, the lecture material to the, uh, the photo side or something. And this is what we are mainly doing now. Technique and utilitarian motivations, pattern changes, online fashion shopping. This is the EG result. And in this particular research, because we already submitted the, uh, this paper to several marketing journal, but editors yeah, sent, sent back the other article to us in only one or two days, because most of them, unluckily now, cannot evaluate. But what we want to say and what we want to investigate in this paper is very simple. 
if you already learned the very basics of the marketing, you know the buying uh, decision making is made by hedonic reason and the utilitarian reason. But in this study, we want to know the, the process from seeing the one particular item until making decision. Hedonic when and the uh, whether hedonic motive dominates over utilitarian motive or some shift will happen until the decision making process. As such, if you will be capable and the uh, you will be using now about the different type of the data done, you will be more data revealing, especially from becoming data newcomer to data apprentice. Why I can say so? Again, these non-technical skill are a kind of must skill for business school student. We know that to compete with genuine data scientists, but if you are more capable in doing analysis, in the visualization management. You can think be creative to visualize the different source of the data from the question survey and the EG data or something and then combine or something, say something new. You will be good data liberated. But if you say, I can only handle with the sales data or the finance data, you automatically narrow down your scope and your competence to specific type of the data. And as the data science prevents to different fields and the many more fields, we will have many more different type of the data with the uh, different type of devices. So keep being very curious and the, uh, always be the aware of their new data, the uh, correction of the their new emerges or not. And Occasionally, especially when you start to work, occasionally to think out, yeah, what will, what kind of the additional data will help to make my storytelling with data more engaging. That's what I want to say to the current business school students. But for immediate research, going back to this, no need to be more so much for staff, math, and AI. But, oh, sorry. To make this training happen, before doing any analysis, just to spend a few minutes with your data. And try to say whether you can figure out something. And after that, even without the request from your future supervisor, 
try to create and to make it a kind of hobby. To have histogram or distribution graph. Answer. If at the first lab, if you can figure out several remarkable facts or the remarkable tendency can be identified to plot these two up next. And if you see there are positive relationship or negative relationship to team one before moving on to the hypothesis question. Then you can unconsciously train and enhance your data literacy. And if you will make those activity and those peer study or the those behavior or the those prior habit, for those who pursue this approach, nurturing your insight, my message is to be very key to outlier. What data science, at least for the time being, cannot handle very well is outlier. Sometimes outlier is just a kind of the extraordinary happen. But sometimes there may be very good reason why some specific subject can be outlier. If you plan to conduct some hypothesis testing for your master thesis project or your applied business project, you may think it granted to exclude outlier. That will be okay for hypothesis testing and to have more unbiased results. But from those bits, those outliers may potentially deliver huge business insight. So, up to your graduation and contingent of the research type you decided to take. What I expect you to do is to keep trying and to make it a habit. Here are the three steps that I suggest. And after graduation and here to be better business analyst, even without the start and the mass knowledge should be more keen to outlier. And keep yet another habit, whether this is an extreme case happening with some probability, or whether this outlier may happen for logical reason. For instance, you may pick up insolvency or failure to payment of the credit card or in use of the credit card. And if credit card company want to detect those extraordinary cases, what you should do from the proportion of the data 
those extraordinary cases occupies only 0.1% or less than 0.1%, but we have to focus on them. That can be happen with probability, but that can be happen with opponent will. Maybe there's some kind of globally blue, or they may be conducted by a cloud group or something. So, to be very good, this is fast. That will be the next step. They hope you will enhance your data literacy through your research project and always try to be very critical and we have to make the habit to confirm the basic tendency or the basic character of the data. And if you have time and chance and always be keen to the uh, new type of the data is emerging in the business field of the research field. Because the knowledge about the variety of the knowledge, the variety of the data, as well as the variety of the analytical method, will make you vulnerable of your data analysts will be broader and broader and richer and richer. So it's almost two hours. So that's the end of my talk. I have to say sorry because the uh, sudden shutdown of the, uh, my lecture at the very early phase. But anyhow, thank you for your listening. And the, uh, I sincerely hope your research project will be fruitful and the, uh, you will be the better and a good data literate in the future. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Prof. Matsura. It's very um, fresh perspective, I would say, in terms of data literacy. Even um, we have a new uh, kind of perspective in terms of the new marketing and stuff. But um, since there is no question online, I, I would like to ask you a few questions as well. Uh, since yesterday, you've been talking about the AI part and now you're talking about the data literacy. So do you believe that the AI will do a good job in terms of analyzing the data itself? Yeah, they are good. So students can use AI when we want to see general tendencies. That's why I am stressing outliers issue. ChatGPT cannot interpret well outliers. So it means that you cannot use the ChatGPT if there's specific uh, generative AI for analyzing data? Yeah, you can, and you can save time as well. <laughs> I see, I see. So if, uh, if I can recall back to your presentation, so, uh, you were saying that Excel is good enough for, to, to analyze data. But can we just use the Excel sheet and then ask the generative AI to find any loopholes or additional findings from the data that we have? Like, for example, if I downloaded pattern data, can, can the generative AI segregate the information according to the expiry, expiration of the date of the pattern itself and then who's the current owner? Yes. But why I stress the Excel functions? because you have to do something on Excel. We can do something to put the many, many pattern data on the generative AI. And your student can enhance the data literacy. How they can build, they can nurture via their own criteria, how much they can build in. That's the problem. So it goes back to the researcher, how the researcher need to think about the data itself. So if, for example, 
it, that's it in terms of Excel data. Like, did it mention in terms of neuroscience or biometric, um, the, the respondents can manipulate the data. Can AI manipulate any data as well? Push. So, so how, how, as a researcher, we are not being tricked by this AI? It seems like, uh, you know, sometimes students or we ourselves tend to believe the AI more <laughs> rather than... No, 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 no. When I say the uh, AI can is, the, uh, as far as we can deliver a considerable number of the research output, AI can answer. They can, but student, especially the youngster student, always be mine. AI or the chat GPT can never give you creative answer. It's more like textbook. I, I That's what machine learning. Yeah, I want to ask you. Uh, very good, anyway. Uh, thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, so regarding in this context, uh, you say it's not, the science is like very huge. How about we talk in this smaller context of small businesses? Mm. How do you think that this can actually um, allow them to practice? Because you say that the scientists they have this mm. mm. uh, small businesses. How do you think they need to That's why I introduced this issue. Probably this is a matter of cost and benefit. Problem is if those small business owners try to use the data they are more likely to manage the risk. Yeah. Because making decision based on the uh, intuition of something is high risk here. So what I usually ask the uh, ambitious entrepreneur is, you can decide to start your business with the intention to collect the data or you will expose yourself to high risk. That's your choice. But making the decision at first will determine your future evolution, future tradition. So if I were you and your student ask the same question, I answer in that way. This is costly. But cost free means you can have transparent data. But you can stop anytime. Even you start to date collecting the data at the initial stage, if you think it's not efficient, but it's useless if you suddenly start. Hmm. One of the very good story, which is closely relevant to innovation, we are always thinking, why wow, Japanese management system and the Japanese R&D strategy is far less quality than US. Meaning that the success rate of the R&D project is far lower and they can take enough risk. I mean, that they mean the Japanese company can, couldn't take enough risk. And we extensively investigate the r and management system, how these two US and the Japanese company created on data aspect. And we found some of the largest U.S. pharmaceutical or the chemical company start to collect the uh, the R and D success and the failure data from 90, late 1980s and start optional evaluation 
from 1990s. Because you know, to make the option estimation, the option evaluation of the R&D project cannot be done without data. And I caution this issue before 2000, but Japanese company, my client company, never heard of it. And they suddenly call me again around 2010. Bro, we want to transform our island system to more quantified way. You can understand and you can imagine what will happen. That's the problem. And the same is true with the same is Okay. Um, anything else? All right. So thank you so much for, for very insightful and very, I would say, informative. Um, yeah. Hopefully not the informative one. I hope the uh, student will be confident with themselves and the child. <laughs> will be encouraging you themselves. And, and one of the lecturers already contacted me regarding the neuroscience and she's very, uh, excited about it and I will try to connect with the IT minister as well. Yes. Right. With that, thank you so much for and I end the session. Thank you so much. And please uh, fill in your attendance form uh, in the chat box. Thank you. Thank you for your patience and the uh, hope you to be get a little later again. <laughs> and yeah uh, hopefully yeah I hope I can I will have a chance to Meet you again, hopefully online again. No, physically, face to face setting again. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, so.